Hello everyone. My name is Sunil Parikh and what we are learning as a part of this series is eVPN and this is our second session where in the first session if you have not watched I will highly encourage you to watch where we have covered the big why behind eVPN. So the first few sessions of this series will focus on the basics and we will cover the big reasons that uh, eVPN got so popular that it had uh, spread its wing across multiple technology sectors and uh, we will see that uh, at least a glimpse of it in this video as well uh, we have covered that mainly in the last session so in today's session we will cover some more fundamental aspects of uh, the big why behind eVPN. And as I was saying, we have talked about it in our last session as well. But in this session, what we will do is we will talk about the service provider story of eVPN. In the last session, we talked mainly on the enterprise and the data centers like with a glimpse of the service provider. But now we will focus mainly on some of the key challenges that the service providers are looking as a part of this. And uh, now this session is for the beginners, but uh, when we interview the candidates in the organization, we found that even some of the senior people also lag on the fundamental aspects of eVPN and uh, that's what I will cover some of those basics in this video if you are planning to stay till the end of this video after hearing the agenda I promise that definitely you will learn something or at least you will recollect uh, uh, something from this session and uh, before we start just one more information that uh, i assume you have heard the name of vpws vpls data center interconnect now i will be covering them at a high level but this is not the session which focus on that so with that what we will be looking at today is the ethernet vpn what's the big deal about it and uh, we will mainly focus our story on the SP side, as I was saying. And we will cover a journey of layer 2 VPN from VPLS to eVPN. And this is where we will also uncover some of the fundamental aspects that I was talking earlier. We will see this from a very ground level if you are planning to stay till the end of this. And I'm, I don't want to make this lecture so long. So what I will do is I will just show you a glimpse of eVPN route types. But this is something that we are not covering in this session. That is the plan for the upcoming sessions. Right. So with that, this was the picture if you have seen the last lecture where uh, we have drawn and service provider so this is your service provider network that you see here we have drawn an enterprise network and we have also drawn a data center network and we have talked about different challenges that each of these segments face now on sp side it was on, on lower side and why they need to go towards evpn so you see there is a shift that is happening and uh, be it enterprise, be it service provider or be it data center towards a common control plane and that is what the BGP EVP is. Right. So let's just uh, focus on the service providers and see what different type of services they use to provide and what is the way forward for that? So, 
with the evolution of MPLS, what happened is that uh, different type of services, the demand for different type of services was basically growing from the customer side. And the thought process for the providers was that let's take each of these services irrespective of the type of it on MPLS. So they wanted to keep the MPLS as a consistent thing across all these services. Right? What are uh, these different type of services? Right? For example, layer 3 VPN. This was one of the first and very popular service that these SP used to provide and it was over MPLS. When I say it was over MPLS, it means it was using the MPLS data plane. And it was so popular that uh, very soon what we had seen that the demand for other type of services had also grown over a period of time. For example, in the data centers, right, with the layer 2, when there was a STP or uh, RSTP, PVST, all these variations of STP, right, we had seen that uh, in the last section. They used to block multiple links right that basically your redundancy will be blocked and it will not be utilized at all to solve this service providers and industries basically came with this shortest path bridging or the trill mechanism right? and uh, then there was a demand from the customers where uh, they started reaching out to their service providers and asked for a layer 2 service. So what they were asking is like I have my site 1, let's say this is E1 and C2, I want a layer 2 connection between these two. So SP and the industry answered this with VPWS, which is Virtual Private Wired Service, it was a point-to-point -point service. And layer 2, where you will have, let's say, dot one IP here, dot two IP here in the same subnet. And here, in between this whole SP cloud, will be transparent. You will not see any hops here. You will can have direct uh, routing neighborship let's say ospf if you want to have a neighborship it's it's like as good as a direct link that you are provisioning between ce1 and ce2 if you want to understand in the bare uh, simple language but that's how the service was asked by these uh, uh, customers and then very soon after this, they had asked like, why only two? Let's have a CE3 here. Let's connect this also and let's make it multi-point. And that's where the VPLS came into the picture. Right? So all these different services that you see here, right? these were uh, the evolution as uh, the MPLS was getting popular and uh, customers were asking uh, about all these. But one thing regarding these services is that the control plane for these services was provided by different and disjoint VPN technologies. Right? So with L3 VPN, it was uh, VPN V4 address family that uh, we had seen, uh, VPWS, VPLS, there were different mechanisms like LDP based, or BGP based, or there was a combination of these two as well that were implemented. And uh, we will see this in the upcoming part of, of this lecture after a few slides. But the key message here is that the data plane was consistent, but the control plane was completely different. So, where does the eVPN come into the picture? So what eVPN help us to do is that it help us to consolidate basically. eVPN, you can provide your L3 VPN services 
whatever these non-blocking links the spb or the trill is giving evpn we had also seen this can give you with exlan plus bgp in the control plane right vpws can be given by evpn vpls can be given by the evpn so what you see here that and I'm not mentioning about the data center interconnect, the data center overlays, right? There are so many of such services where now what industry is finding the answer in the control plane common, which is EVPN. And EVPN also gives you the flexibility that we had saw, saw earlier, where the data plane can be MPLS, can be VXLAN can be NVGRE, can be segment routing V6. You know, it, it gives you so much of flexibility. Right? So let me just clear the ink here. So the key message that you see on the slide here is that eVPN not only does the job of many legacy VPN technologies, it actually does it better than each one of them. And this is the point I will reiterate and by the end of this video, you will be able to understand why it do a better job. Right. So for our example, though I'm in this lecture, will not be focusing much on VPLS or VPWS or any of other services because this is on eVPN, but let's cover VPLS at a high level and see what are the challenges that were seen and how its successor eVPN solves those. So, first thing first, the th what was the thought process behind VPLS, right? And what I was talking earlier, right? VPLS was the obvious evolution of take anything over MPLS, right? And when the customers had started realizing the benefit of layer 3 VPN, they also wanted to leverage or extend their layer 2 VPN as well. And for that, they wanted like simply an emulation of their LAN across the service provider cloud. And as I was saying earlier, they started with point-to-point -point transport and taking it to multi-point was the next obvious step. So for a layman, let, let's understand that, okay, you, you might have heard the name of VPLS and this section or the next, uh, slide is for the beginners where you understand that okay there is this virtual private land services what what exactly does this mean so again for those uh, of you at the high level what i mean by the land evolution so let's say this is my service provider cloud that you see here this is sp network and there is a customer which is let's say ce1 two and three, they want to connect and they want to emulate their LAN. So they want to have dot one here, dot two here, and dot three IP here, and want to have a direct peering by hiding all this cloud. Right? So at a high level, how does this work? Or if I want to show you via some uh, animation, think of it that the whole this SP network that you see here, consider this as a big, large switch where your customer switches or their devices are connected, right? So, so far, this was good. Like this was a very simple topology. Okay, the problems that were there with layer two, work here as well and we will talk about those problems but connecting in this way 
service providers were fine so far even though there were challenges and we will look at that but where exactly uh, more problems started coming in is when these CEs or these customers have started asking for a redundancy that okay now we want to make it uh, multi-point right uh, multi-point it was already there uh, I'm sorry for that but we want some sort of redundancy let's say if this thing goes fail this should immediately fix up right because these were some critical let's say data center this is DC1 this is DC2 likewise right so when this redundancy aspect also came into picture already it was complex and why I say uh, it was complex let me just talk about it now itself where even though we are simulating uh, this layer 2 network and that to over a provider network but the fundamental aspects of flood and learn was still there so even in this let's say when you configure a vpls you need to have pseudo wires or basically virtual connections in a full mesh to all the bees and when a mac address let's say ce1 want to reach to ce3 and it doesn't know the mac of ce3 so this is your ce3 what it will do is it will send a r packet and that will get broadcasted in the SP network. Right now, uh, here then this guy will also listen this broadcast and it will send a unique cast response back to this guy, and then this guy will maintain a table like this where it will say that C1 Mac. Is connected locally on this interface let's say this interface is interface 1 c2 uh, c3 mac is connected on pseudo wire 3 let's say this is pseudo wire 3 right so it will uh, maintain that table the additional complexity that came into picture when you provide these redundancy there you need to even have these stp to block these link otherwise this will also let me use a different color here that this uh, when this guy sends the R broadcast this will come here also and then you see right this is a loop so those additional considerations also need to be taken into consideration and to implement uh, VPLS this uh, implementation that we have just talked about was LDP one, where you have full mesh of LDP targeted pseudo wire sessions across all of these routers. It can even be done with BGP as well. But the point that I'm trying to make here is that the fundamental aspect of flood and LAN doesn't change. Don't worry if you don't understand VPLS, VPWS, or you don't know the nitty gritty details. Uh, I'm, I'm not covering that as well. I'm just talking about this fundamental behavior. VPLS just em uh, emulate the LAN, but it doesn't change anything there. Right. So just, just remember this key message here. So what exactly is VPLS that we had seen here? That it just looked like a Ethernet switch, a bigger Ethernet switch, which connect the remote sites together, and it seems like they are connected to the same switch. Okay. So this solution can suffer the same issues that a layer two network is uh, prone to. All those layer two, the flooding, loops, all these were the problems with the VPLS as well. Right. So if if you see here, right, there are two things. One is 
that okay you are learning the mac address which is local and then learning mac address remote right for both you uh, like you use this uh, flood and learn you learn this in the data plane right currently and now you listen to me very carefully because now i am coming to that key message here so currently there is or when when i talk about vpls there is no efficient way of distributing the information that you know let's say a switch a learns a mac address locally it doesn't have any efficient way of distributing that right and distribution is a big challenge even if we see in our real life as well right across industries or for in our day to day life there are uh, many examples where a poor distribution if you see like this right this guy is simply throwing the packets out and distributing right that cause a lot of worries distribution plays a key role if you have a good product but you doesn't have a good distribution strategy it's bound to fail right and that's where the management right they start get concerned about the distribution they need to have a good focus around the distribution right so with this thought process if you look at vpls as a product was very good there is no doubt about it there is no second thought the customer needs it there are good number of use cases about it but the distribution right or the mac exchange that in the data plane that was the key problem i will let that sink for a minute and uh, then we'll continue so just to reiterate again vpls yes the concept was really good even uh, multiple drafts kirti based uh, compiler based right on ldp pgp that we had seen came to uh, how efficiently they can distribute this uh, mac address information over that service provider network but still there were not good level of improvements in the distribution and that was my friends was the key problem here so now and 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 i want your full attention to the next slide because that's the key message if you see that it's okay blank slide but let's take a step back and see from a switch perspective right first it need to learn something right the switch is let's say learning a mac address right and then if that switch can have some efficient way of distribution right to distribute that mac to all other entities and okay look i have this mac address that is associated with me if you want to send any packet you can send that to me and it can forward that right so you see there is learning there is distribution so one aspect one side of it is learning the information other side of it is the distribution of the reachability information right and what if if i just split these two right if we just split these two parts then we can make the network more efficient 
we learn the information and then there is a robust way of distributing that information and eVPN exactly does this where you are learning the MAC addresses in the data plane that's fine let's say a switch learning the MAC address right but then it was the distribution that was the problem right it was like the flood and learn that was happening in the data plane that was the issue so that we are giving a efficient way of distribution which is nothing but just bgp and bgp say that okay switch one has learned this mac address and it will distribute that to the other sites right so that's where we are decoupling these two and evpn simplifies this and this was one of the key takeaway learning that I wanted all of you to take from this session. Right, I, I hope you got this. So if we just revisit this a bit here in our earlier example, and uh, let me just clear the ink here. So this switch, here switch one let's say uh, it still learns this mac address in data plane but then there is no flood and learn what it will do is it will send this information via bgp to a centralized authority remember the picture that we had seen on the right side on that slide and then bgp will distribute this so now this guy this uh, switch you can call it switch 3 you can call it b3 knows that mac1 via bgp is connected to switch 1 or b1 no flood and lock that's what my friends evpn do and then this, this is the case even with VPWS as well, uh, other services, right? We are giving an efficient control plane. We had seen that in case of VPLS, right? So let's just quickly go back to our deck. And so this was the slide where uh, we were discussing this uh, is joint of uh, learning versus uh, distribution. And now, Let's see VPLS versus eVPN. So technically, if you see the way I described so far, there is no similarity. VPLS, flood and learn, this is our control plane, and then by the way, a very efficient control plane. But one similarity that you may see is that they just try to solve the same problem. So if you now connect this information with what I had described earlier in my second slide where L3 VPN, VPLS, VP, uh, WS, any other services, right? It all consolidate towards eVPN. eVPN, technically speaking, have that capability to provide all of them and it can provide in a better way. Okay. So for me, eVPN is like just one love and one pain. Why I say one love, one pain, that uh, we will see basically in our upcoming sessions. Right. So I hope by now you are able to understand the fundamental difference what exactly eVPN do in a better way. So with that, we are approaching the end of this lecture and uh, let's just look at the different route types, right? So this eVPN, it is a another address family, the way you must have worked on VPN v4, VPN v6, MVPN, there was a MDD address family also for some time. 
right so all these were address families in bgp it was basically the capabilities that got enhanced and more and more type of vpn support was added to bgp evpn is not different evpn is also another address family in bgp and in that what it advertises ethernet auto discovery route mac or ip advertisement multicast ethernet tag route segment route for ethernet ip prefix route and then there are some more by the way for multicast there are like six seven eight right but if you see what exactly is happening we are consolidating our layer two and layer 3 in eVPN but then why it is resulting in all these so many types of routes so that is where I was saying one love one pain but I will make every effort to highly simplify this for you guys and in our next session we will talk about one of these uh, routes we will open it up and we will see its application how does it propagate what information it carries and uh, maybe if the time permits we will also look at the config as well if not in the next session the uh, the session after that definitely so with that we come to an end of it i hope you guys have found it useful and it was worth spending your time thank you so much for watching